Hello guys, this is Universal Giant, and welcome back for more of Let's Play Donkey Kong Land 3, now with 100% more post-production, but I'll get to that in a minute. Here, we're going to be taking on the Time Attack, or the Time Trials, which we unlock for getting all of the DK coins, all of the bonus tokens, and all of the stopwatches. And, this is pretty much what you would expect from a Time Attack Time Trials mode that you unlock. You just have to get through the level as quickly as possible. Absolutely nothing counts. Bonuses don't... I don't even think the bonuses are here. Bananas don't mean anything. Coins don't mean anything. All that stuff is still there, including all of the Kong letters. But the only thing that matters is what time you finish the level in. And I also added in the bottom right-hand corner, just for a quick reference, the target time for each of the levels so you get an idea as to how much the clock is breathing down my neck. But all of these were pre-recorded, and I have to say, on average, these took about four times as long as the level's length. I think I have about 15 to 16 minutes total of the time attack here, and I spent roughly an hour trying to do all of these, so I'm only going to be showing these successful takes, not the ones with me banging my head against the wall because I missed a roll or something, but... All of these levels are exactly the same as the ones that we ran through, and they give you one of each of the different kinds of levels that we've seen before, any of the different layouts or the different backgrounds and styles. I think they only do one of each, and they're appropriately named on the list. But this is the first time, at least in the Donkey Kong Land series, that they did anything outside of just the normal platforming game, where they actually test your ability to go through the level quickly with time trials. And although strategies for each of them will vary depending on what the level is and what kind of things it asks you to do in order to succeed, the biggest thing for doing well in these is knowing how to use the B button and knowing the levels inside and out. Now granted, practice makes perfect, the more often you try these, the more attempts you go through, even if they're not successful, can only help you teach you something else on the level that you didn't realize before, but... Basically, always run, always hold down the B button if it helps you go faster, and a bit of a speedrunning tactic, you do get a minor boost in speed when you roll through enemies. So, try to do that as often as possible, as opposed to trying to avoid them by jumping over them. It's a bit of a risk in that you won't always collide with them, like maybe the porcupine will turn around before you can collide with it on the proper side and you'll take a hit. And your timer doesn't stop if you take a hit either. The timer keeps going regardless of whether or not you're frozen in an animation or something. So you need to keep that in mind. Not only do you lose a hit if you take damage, but you also lose time as well. And if you're moving, it stops you dead, so you need to be very careful about taking hits. But whenever you start the time trial, you also start off with both of your Kongs, and you always start off with Dixie. It's nice that they start you off with Dixie, so you don't have to waste time changing if you want to, say, float over a gap or something. I'm not sure what else they would do to help you there, but... The way most of these runs go, I'll do extremely well in the beginning, because chances are, if I didn't do well, I would have stopped and restarted, which you can do by start selecting out of the run. Just like you would a level if you've already beaten it. Which is convenient. I'm actually kind of curious if that only works because we've actually beaten the real level, and they're just taking us to the real level. Because you never really think about how they program these sorts of time trials. Are you running through the exact same level? Like, if you hacked your way into the time trials before you actually beat the level, and you tried to start select, would you not be able to escape it? That's kind of interesting to test out, but... If you want to get the maximum percentage in your Donkey Kong Land 3 file, you have to clear every one of these time trials. And this was... Probably, I want to say this was the first time I'd ever done it, because it, even when I had it on my Game Boy, I never actually got this far. Because there are always some particular bonuses or some DK coins that are absurdly annoying to find that you just never know to look for unless you've had 
too much time on your hands or if you had game facts or a walkthrough available to you. But this level in particular, the underwater level, you don't necessarily think about how to improve your mobility underwater. I'm not 100% sure on whether or not Unguard is faster. I want to say he is. And certainly plowing through enemies would help you gain a bit of speed as well. But I just got him because I like using him, I suppose. Particular with the underwater section, because you don't have nearly as much freedom in how you can move around or how you can increase your speed underwater, you have to know this level inside and out if you want to succeed, except if you know the one shortcut here that I'll show off, I don't think I would have been able to beat this time trial without getting to that shortcut. It saves you a lot of time, and I think you'll find if you become very familiar with the levels, even if you mess up to the point where you cost yourself maybe five or seven seconds, it still gives you plenty of time to complete the time trial. It's not super duper stringent. But yeah, the cannons that fire you straight through the wall... I don't know how you're supposed to find that sort of stuff. These are the kinds of things that you'd actually have to look into a speedrun to check out, and... Some of the speedruns for Donkey Kong Land games are pretty dang impressive. In fact, one of the reasons why I didn't notice where the warp barrel was in the first world was because I looked up an outdated speedrun that didn't know where that was either. Kind of silly there, but it's fun to run through all of these levels without regards for looking for letters or hero coins or bonuses, and just trying to jump straight to the end. And not to say rushing through a level is more fun than trying to explore it around, but the level just doesn't feel the same way when you're not looking for all of those bonuses. I, It's a nice bit of challenge. Personally, I've never been a fan of time trials, but I do like how they switched it up a little bit. I just wish you could have gotten 100% without having to do them, because I believe your file is stuck on 99% unless you succeed in at least one of the time trials. I don't know how many you need minimum to get 100%. But if you want to maximize your percentage, and it does go above 100%, you're going to have to clear all of the time trials. I just thought it would be worth showing off here, because it is part of the game, even if it's not part of the main game. I will say, I don't know, I think the only other Donkey Kong game I've seen that has time trials is Returns. I'm not sure if this was also in Donkey Kong Country 3, maybe you could tell me how it stacks up to that. But, it just feels strange going through these kinds of levels simply to get the fastest time. I'm just not used to rushing through games. I like taking my time and I like exploring around, seeing what's going on, maybe finding a secret or two, or just taking my time. Which is why I've never been too big of a fan of time trials. If I didn't think this was possible, if they were much more stringent on these times, and they really could have been. You'll see a lot of the times that I clear with, clear with the good well, not all of them, but some of them clear with 8 to 10, maybe 12 seconds, I'm not sure. But with a lot of these runs, you'll notice that I'm very, very good in the beginning. Just because I played through the beginning so many times that I can afford to mess up at the end and still clear the time. So none of these runs are perfect by any stretch, but they're good enough. And if you have your own run that is any better than this, feel free to... I want to say post a video response. I don't know how I feel about accepting video responses, because I like to keep those exclusively for my own playlist if people... I, I assume it's easier for people to find the next video if I post it as a video response to this one, and vice versa, which is why I've always been doing that, even though I do keep track of playlists. I don't know which one you guys actually use more often. If you go over to the channel to click the playlist, or you just find it easier to use the video response. Never really asked about that. 
But in case you couldn't tell, this is entirely post-production. I am not playing any of this right now. I'm just watching it back on my video preview. And it feels weird to do post-production also. I I can only think of a handful of videos where I've done this before. I've done it for... Let's see, I know I did it for the fishing in Twilight Princess. Can't really think about any other time I did it. Those cannon guys are jerks. I mean, rushing through the levels, you don't even think about what you're doing because you're only thinking about getting to the end as fast as possible, especially here where I'm kind of panicking because I know the end is right there. And I do slip up here and there, but... Again, they are fairly lenient, especially if you know all the ins and outs of the levels, and a lot of them do have pretty significant shortcuts. I don't know why I'm saying a lot so often if a lot isn't true. But even levels like this with a waterfall that you have two minutes to do, this one took me a fairly long time to get, I think. It was either this one or the tree one. I must have redone the beginning of the tree one, like... 25 times because you have to get it starts you off in that area and you have to roll through the neek and if you take too long to roll through it you'll get stuck underneath another platform and like I said before I try to get a good clean start out of all of my runs because if I mess up in the start it's that much more difficult for me to clear it at the end whereas if I want to spend a minute and 30 seconds going through an attempt that I know isn't going to do well in the first place and I have to be better than perfect, then it's just not worth doing. But with these, this one in particular, the tea barrels if you're firing straight up into another tea barrel I found more often than not that you might not have the height necessary to clear the bee, so I like waiting for one more shot out of the cannon before I go over the bee. And I think that's evident in... might have already passed where it was important. But it feels so strange with how much time we spent in all of these levels. Like, there were a couple of episodes I spent the entire 15 to 20 minutes on only two or three levels, and here we're spending maybe a minute, a minute and a half in each of them, and we're covering how many is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... A, about a dozen of these levels in one video. And there, I don't know why I ran through the flag with that barrel if I could hit the flag on the other side without it. I assumed I would have been able to hit it. But this is the one I was talking about when I said that I'd get very, very familiar with this one because of the ghost barrels and everything. This one cave level. The first time I tried the time trials, which wasn't this time, this one gave me so much difficulty. I mean, although I never got to it on my Game Boy, I did test this out on an emulator before doing this one. And of all of the time trials, this is the one that I had to save state abuse through in order to get there. All of the other ones I tried my darndest not to, but this one was just so freaking difficult. And I think that was why I was so good at it here. This might have been only my second or third attempt on it, but I was so familiar with it and so ready for all the tricks of the trade in this level that it didn't cause me as much difficulty as I was expecting it to. But the same holds true for a lot of these levels. The, you know, after you let's play a game, you feel like you know it inside and out. You know all the tricks, you know all of the... Well, not all the secrets. The, any of the secrets that you showed off, at least, you're very well aware of. That you probably wouldn't have known to look up yourself had you not. Or you wouldn't have encouraged yourself, or you wouldn't have cared enough to look up all of the secrets. But yeah, here we clear with a good 12-13 seconds left. But when you let's play a game, you know it inside and out, especially if you go through the editing process like I do, making sure almost everything is exactly perfect. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of my own commentary, I do try to make sure the quality and the editing is as sharp as it can possibly be. Because although I don't think I'm the most entertaining person in the world, I like to be as professional with these as possible, 
if it doesn't involve the commentary. Which, I suppose, wasn't exactly reflected in the commentary for this one, but more on that when we get to the credits. I... I'm not sure what else there is to say about the time trials, really. I mean, you, if you've stuck it out for this long, you pretty much know what we're in for. The only... We only have one more after this, and although it might not necessarily fit in terms of a time trial and that a majority of it is literally on rails, clearing everything in the tube level in one life without taking a hit is extremely difficult. And I think this one I got on my second try, I don't know how I managed to pull that off. Although you can take a hit in this level without losing the time, you can't possibly take a hit on the sled, on the ride, I don't know what you want to call it, but... If you're on this thing and you get hit, not only do you need the second or two to change between Kongs, but you need a couple of seconds to build up your forward momentum as well, and that will be the difference between whether or not you can make the time. So this one you have to be pretty much perfect. You can take a hit at the end of there, but if I was stopped on the roller coaster ride, wouldn't have been able to make it. And once you clear all of the time trials, you get this trophy that says you've completed your game file 103%. I don't know why they jumped this one up to 103, but it's 103. And they give you the credits music for some reason. Which gives me the opportunity of splicing in the full-length credits that I so silly sped up through before. And I always feel the obligation to leave in the credits at the end because the game developers do deserve their time, but... I want to take this time to just reflect on what made this LP what it was. And I'm not sure how you guys received it or not. If It seemed to me that a lot of people were turned off by this LP. I'm not sure if it was because of my commentary or simply because it was a Game Boy game and it's not the most pretty game to look at. But it was something I just wanted to try out. I mean, the first couple of videos, I had a lot of extra energy. And, I mean, that usually happens to me at the start of an LP, especially when I haven't had very much time to record, or I'm coming off of a very serious game, like going into Donkey Kong Land 2 and Jet Force Gemini last summer, where I was coming off of Mother 3, although as wonderful a game as that is, it was pretty serious, and I kind of wanted to let loose with the commentary when I first started recording the other two. But in addition to that, when you don't record for like three to four weeks, you're just so anxious to get going, and even somebody like me, who's usually calm and reserved, can kind of lose it a little bit. And after editing the first three parts of Donkey Kong Land 3, I wanted to see if I could just take that and run with it, if I could bring that same level of energy to all of the other videos in the series. And if you want my personal opinion on that, which doesn't exactly matter as long as you guys enjoy it, but... Although I had fun with it, I can't stand how stupid I sound when I just say things willy-nilly without trying. And there's always that little voice in my head beside... It's either I'm being super serious, but there's a voice in the back of my head telling me to be silly, or I'm being extremely silly and there's a voice in the back of my head telling me to be more serious. I can never be 100% one or the other, which is why I think I stumble as often as I do. Especially in here, if I started sounding incredibly stupid, I'd realize and say something that would not necessarily lead into something else. Like I'd say, let's keep going, and then not say anything for 10 seconds while I gather my thoughts. Or there was another part where I had no idea what to say and I just blanked out completely. Because I'm not used to doing commentary like this, where I just let my thoughts speak words and not put a filter over it like I usually do, or try to be intelligent with what I'm saying. It wasn't something that I'd ever done before, 
and I don't know whether or not you guys liked it. But regardless, it's not something that I'm as comfortable doing as the typical commentary that you've heard me do up to this point, so... I think after this, I'll go back to what I'm most comfortable with and what you guys best know me for. I think that's just for the best all around. But that's not to say that I won't try another silly project like this once in a while. It was just something I wanted to give a shot at, and whether or not it was successful is yet to be seen. But regardless, it's been an interesting journey in this game. It wasn't exactly the kind of journey I expected it to be, but it never is, is it? And this should about do it for all of the Game Boy games I intended to Let's Play. I mean, there weren't too many Game Boy games that I played when I was younger that I haven't already LP'd. There are a couple, but I'm not as adamant about Let's Playing them as I have been the Donkey Kong Land games, Kirby's Dream Land games, and Block Ball. There might be one or two in there I missed. But that's pretty much all the ones that I had my heart set out on doing when I started Let's Playing a few years ago. That's not to say I won't do any more, but it's all the ones I have planned, at least for the near future. And since I had to splice in the credits after the first K. Rule fight, because you don't get the credits anywhere else, it had the the end with the question mark! But now, when we go to save our game in the Lost World at Wrinkly's Refuge, we can see our file completion percentage. 103%. That's gonna do it for Donkey Kong Land 3. This is Universal Giant. I hope you guys had fun. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.